I Will Marry When I Want is a Gakuyu play collaboratively authored by Ngugi wa Mirai and Ngugi wa Fayango. This thought-provoking play, first staged in Kenya in 1977, unravels the narrative of a farmer ensnared in a web of social and religious pressures, ultimately leading him to jeopardize his land. The play delves into significant themes, casting a discerning eye on the hypocrisy and corruption that can permeate both religion and capitalism. Its exploration of political matters was nothing short of controversial in post-colonial Kenya. The very production of this play is often considered the catalyst for the arrests and detentions, without formal charges, of Mirai and Thayango during the same year. Their release, along with other detainees, came about in 1978, following the ascension of Daniel Toroidic Arap Mwa to the presidency after the passing of the autocratic president Kenyatta. The narrative unfolds within the humble abode of a financially struggling couple, Kagunda and Wanjisi. Engaged in preparations to host affluent visitors, they engage in discussions concerning their daughter, Gathoni. Despite her striking beauty, Gathoni is perceived as shallow and is in a relationship with John Mahoney, whom her parents criticize for his perceived idleness and modernity. Kigunda takes immense pride in displaying a framed deed for one and a half acres of land on their wall, a significant acquisition following Kenya's independence revolution. This land represents the family's sole financial security, their friends, Jakamba and Juki, pay them a visit. Jakamba is deeply involved in political activism and expresses strong disapproval of the wealthy elite and Western powers, which he believes collaborate to oppress the Kenyan populace. He also voices his concerns about the encroachment of Western religions, particularly Christianity, eroding traditional Kenyan belief systems and cultures. After Jakamba and Juki depart, wealthy guests arrive, including Kiwe Mahuni, who harbors a desire to purchase Kagunda's land. Accompanying him is his wife, Jezebel, as well as another couple. Kagunda is anxious about the possibility of Kioi raising the topic of the land sale, but to his surprise, Kioi shifts the conversation towards religious matters. Following Kioi's suggestion, he advises Kagunda to marry Wanjisi in a Christian church to formalize their union. This proposal initially stirs unease and disagreement between Kagunda and Wanjisi. Kagunda vehemently opposes the idea. However, after Kioi and the other guests depart, Kagunda and Wanjisi engage in a thoughtful discussion. They eventually reach the decision that if they proceed with a Christian wedding, Kioi might withdraw his objection to his son, John, marrying their daughter. Thus, they choose to embrace Kioi's suggestion, even when Jakamba returns to challenge their decision. Jakamba maintains his position that aligning themselves with foreign powers and the wealthy elite, as represented by Kioi, goes against the interests of the suffering Kenyan people. Undeterred, Kagunda and Wanjisi remain resolute in their choice. Subsequently, Kagunda and Wanjisi visit Kioi and Jezebel's residence. Initially, they encounter a rather hostile reception. However, when they inform Kioi and Jezebel of their intention to marry as Christians, they are granted a warm welcome. Kigunda approaches Kioi with a request for a modest loan to fund their wedding expenses. To his dismay, Kioi declines, but proposes an alternative. He suggests arranging a bank loan with their land as collateral. Reluctantly, Kigunda agrees to this arrangement. With borrowed funds, Kagunda and Wanjisi joyfully prepare for their upcoming wedding, their imaginations brimming with the grandeur of the occasion. However, their joy is short-lived as Gathoni arrives in tears, revealing that John has abandoned her upon learning of her pregnancy. Distressed by this development, Kagunda and Wanjisi approach Kioi, assuming he would now consent to his son marrying their daughter. To their dismay, Kioi reacts with coldness and insults, derogatorily referring to Gathoni and denying any responsibility. This provokes Kagunda's anger, leading to a confrontation in which he brandishes a sword, causing Kioi to cower in fear. The tension escalates further when Jezebel enters, armed with a gun and accompanied by a security guard. In a tragic turn of events, Kagunda is shot, marking a fateful climax. The final scene shifts into the future, revealing that Kagunda has survived the gunshot. However, Kioi's actions lead to the early recall of the loan, resulting in the family's devastating loss of their land. The land that once belonged to Kagunda has been acquired by Kioi at a bargain, and he intends to construct a factory on it. Gathoni, forced into a whitressing job, bears the weight of financial hardship. 
Her father, Kigunda, sinks into a deepening despair, seeking solace in excessive drinking. During a visit from Jakamba and Juki, Wanjisi pours out her frustrations and sorrow. When Kigunda returns home from the bar, heavily intoxicated, he becomes confrontational and engages in a heated argument with his wife. In an attempt to mediate, Jakamba implores them to direct their anger not at each other, but at the oppressive forces represented by individuals like Kioi and the powerful entities that align with the wealthy to subjugate and harm the righteous people of Kenya. Jakamba's impassioned plea inspires Kigunda and Wanjisi. Together, they initiate a song that resonates with the call to awaken and resist those who have inflicted suffering upon their nation. They declare that the oppressed have reached a breaking point and the trumpet of the masses has been blown, heralding the imminent revolution. The play's political themes are conveyed with unmistakable clarity, denouncing foreign influences perceived as eroding Kenya's traditional values. The ruling class is depicted as capitalist exploiters, thriving at the expense of the impoverished. The resounding call for revolution in the play's conclusion led to the author's arrest by the authorities. The use of traditional Kenyan culture and references to Christianity, such as the character Jezebel, underscore these themes in unambiguous terms. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.